just don't know I don't know I'm looking, yeah Mark Clark, that's classic, I love it And welcome, 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 family, to the show. Bootsy Vegas. Hello, my brother. My Vegas, how are you, my friend? No suit today. I'm shocked, everybody. I'm sorry. No suit today. I normally try to dress up, but today, me and Bootsy are casual as we hop into a motivating Monday. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm always casual, so let's not put me in this. You know what I mean? That is you, true. You're always the professional one. I'm the one that is work in progress, trying to get to mock clock status. So, you know, I hope I'm not rubbing off on you in a bad way since you got all these amazing things on your horizon for you. Well, Don't no, let today, me... today, Bootsy, is just, you know, today just one of the days. We had a busy weekend. But, Bootsy, I was now, <clears throat> of course, the uh, I think we we're still – tripping on the tragedy in buffalo and i actually have footage and i was like you know what maybe i, I won't play that right boots because at the end of the day number one not only is it just too tragic and too heartbreaking uh number two it probably will get taken off on all the platforms right because it's too violent yeah uh, because it's already started being take off one part has already been taken off but i'll let you continue yeah and so at the end of the day um you know, let's first first we'll do a review and then a positive. It's, it's motivating Monday, Bootsy. So, right, what right. do you think? Let's okay. We can get it out of the way. At the end of the day, a couple things here, Bootsy. This, if the, if you have not seen the video at all, the heartbreaking part is Bootsy. I mean, he captured this on Twit on his Twitch account, mm -hmm. and so in real time, you see this man killing people in real time. I guess it ended up being ten deaths at this point. Um, the part, Bootsy, that stands out that and no one ever talks about is, Bootsy, it looks just like a damn video game. Video right. games that these kids play every that's a day. Great, that's a great assessment, Mark. Right? They play a, these games ooh. every day. And I, when I talk to my kids about all these issues that pop up politically, I always talk about the super strong lobbying groups. And that explain to them, well, what are, what are lobbying groups, Dad? What does it have to do with anything? What has to do with anything is, Things that go on in our life every day, most of it's driven by pressure that these groups have, that, that control things have. So mm -hmm. obviously, Bootsy, the gaming lobby must be out of this world because kids every day from the time they're four years old sit in front of their computers and their television and they play these violent games day in and day out. And Bootsy, the technology is so much that when you watch the when you watch the footage, you cannot tell Bootsy. You cannot tell the difference between if you're watching a video game or if you're watching whatever. I'm not. I'm just going to just play this a clip. Um, Bootsy, you can't tell. The yeah. difference between a that was a human being, that was a woman who was killed just like that. But Bootsy, you work with kids, you cannot tell the difference between that scene you just saw, which was real, between what these kids watch every day. And so, Bootsy, if there all is your mind does is watch these games and play these games and it gets more and more realistic. You can buy attachments to your video games to give you the same feel. The audio, that scene right there, Bootsy, was just like, and so so much so, if you watch that scene, Bootsy, and I didn't say anything, you might have thought it was a video game, but it's not a video game. It is life. And these guys, you know what, Bootsy? These kids are being radicalized by the content that they view on social media, thank you, Doctor Mr. Trump, and you put but that also, combined with the video game where they kill, kill, kill with no consequence. There's no connection between feeling. There's no connection between pain. It's just human, kill, kill, kill yeah. and there's no humanity. But also, so there's no. But, but Marcus, that's a great point. You know, I, I had this discussion with my students about what is now normalized to them. You know, the great point that you're making, it is marketed and it is normalized to them. You know, we had this discussion about drill music and, and, and all that. Now, the most interesting thing about the whole thing is 
is that there are there are I would say colleges a, a high volume of colleges that have scholarships now for gaming. I want you to understand that 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 is a market, that is an industry, that is that is an industrial industry that is now marketed to you and even packets and marketed to you in an educational form. And I think there's so many dynamics that we should discuss that, that can be discussed about how what I don't know if parents realize is what is normal to them, right. what is normalized to them, what is marketed to them. Death, trauma is marketed to them. It is normalized to them. And now we're seeing the effects of things being marketed and normalized. So that that is a great assessment, Mark. Also, I don't really got much to add on that. But. But Bootsy, and also lastly, because we're going to move on to some positive stuff. Here's the thing now. And Bootsy, I, I know you've seen it because you work with these kids. Oh, yeah. Bootsy, your sound. What's going on, Marilyn Monroe, D.C.? And also, Evelyn. Bootsy, you might have to click on and click off. For some reason, you have your sound is, is uh, loud. It's uh, it's choppy. OK, I got it. I love all. Um, for some reason. The parent parent. Look, let me tell you something. Being a parent is very challenging. Right. There's so much going on these days that, you know, our parents did not have to face. What's up, Jackie? Um, and. What's the part that's kind of uh, that's sticky is oftentimes as a parent, you'll buy your child, um, you'll buy your child these games. Bootsy, you there? Yes, I'm here. That's, that's much better. So Bootsy, I was gonna say, and you have a boy, you have a boy, you have a oh my god, a preteenage boy. So Bootsy, you know what I'm talking about. And but you work with kids. So what happens is those of us who work with young people have an advantage over people who are kind of disconnected. You know, normal parents right. that work at jobs that don't deal with young people, don't deal with co topics that <laughs> young people are talking about because Bootsy, I witnessed it many times where ki parents were bu are buying and bought not only gaming stuff, but the games that are mature games for their kids. Right. Uh, what, what's the one that, when they be robbing people and taking? Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft, uh, Grand Theft Auto and sex, Fortnite. violence, For and, Fortnite. and again, no accountability. You know, right. it, I, it, I never it, forget it, the it, scene it, where, you know, guys, you're picking up a prostitute, you get done with her, you kick her out of the car, you punch her in the face, and that becomes funny. For these for the kids because you know you can, you keep doing the actions and the 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 the, the prostitute mm -hmm. has a reaction and you're just like dude morally this is a mess right and there's and nobody the, it, regulating it and the other thing is you think because it's a video game that it's not adult like I don't know if everybody have always put the correlations of because it's a video game and you're in there that it's not necessarily kid friendly you know what I mean so that also within itself is a industry as well because it is now adult video gaming with adult content and there are multiple uh, streams of uh, ways that you can promote market and see. And I just don't know if, if all these parents realize what's being marketed, how it's being marketed and possibly the effects. Oh, yeah. you know, the, the worst thing in the world that people feel, don't realize is what you can consume through the internet. Like if, if people really knew what they got and saw, like people would be surprised that, the number one way to consume porn, which oh, yeah. I did not know till last, was was Twitter. Right. Oh yeah, and that's the thing. Parents again, kind of not really paying attention. Don't really yeah. know. You can get your porn on on Twitter. I remember as a kid, I used to get off on uh, Sears catalogs in the bra and lingerie section. That's what <laughs> I had that going on. Okay. <laughs> so now imagine when you can see stuff that even your daddy ain't ever seen or your mom yeah. ain't ever seen. Every day they yeah, have how the phone accessible with it is. Every day, yeah, parents, everything is so accessible. Everything yeah. is so you know. What I mean, like, like it, it's not even the process. In in, are you up on it? Are you censoring what they can see on your YouTube page? Are you censoring what they can see on their phone? Like all these things, as a father of eleven year old, I recently had to learn because there are a lot. What people don't know is a father of an eleven year old. I just realized last year there are a lot of kid friendly adult cartoons with cussing in it that look kid friendly that they've done voiceovers on and they're getting three or four million streams uh, uh, in a month. So you just got to be up on it. But I hope to know, I hope the powers that be know that at a rapid rate, all this stuff is changing how they consume it. You know what I mean? It, 
it's just so much. And then sadly, like, we have to deal with it. Now, to be honest, as a parent, um, as a parent, you know, I think my our approach, I, I my approach is you you have to talk to your kids, you have to engage with your kids. There's so much stuff that happens every day. You're not going to catch up. You're not going to keep up. And all those little devices they have to block this and like that, it ain't going to work. Okay, I'm sorry. If you, it's really you are no match. You're no match for what's going on and for a kid's mind as far right. as how quickly they adapt to whatever the changes are. All you can do is get in their head and have a conversation. Right. And I think just that conversation is just about respect. It's about, you know what I mean? Because, But sadly, I, I just feel bad about it. And it's so funny. By the time you see it on the news and it's a conversation, it's so far gone. It's like the kids be looking at the, it's like when they call in these damn uh, creators of content and these things uh, to talk to Congress, man, that's a freaking waste of time. A bunch of old people. If you if you got a twenty one, if, if Congress was made up of eighteen year olds, then you might have a chance. But right. your old asses is asking uh, Bezos about some shit. Man, you don't even know what the hell you're talking about. You got right. people that, uh, www dot. Uh, look, man, <laughs> you are no match for these geniuses that are creating this stuff. And so also, it's uh, just performative, as kids say. And last thing, Mark, because everything you're saying is correct, and I hope people are listening. But also, what you can buy and get your hands on through the internet, like when you talk about these guns and the fact that with with, with the technology of 3D and stuff like that, is that you could get your hands on anything through the internet. There's so many ways that you like when people see all these mass shootings and these guns and everything. Do you realize how easy it is to access and get your hands on it through the internet with no regulation? Like literally, there are 15 and 14 year olds who can get their hands on something quicker than adults through the internet with no regulation. So, I just think is that th there needs to be a better understanding of what's available, what they have access to. And have the discussion with your kids and do a better job of just keeping up because you never know. You just do not know. And you don't know who your kids – the other thing is you don't know who your kids are hanging around and, and, and what they have access to because that's something that I am now regulating with my own son. Of I have my hands on him really how hard of who he is around. And when somebody says this and act this way, you know what I mean? But it goes back to what you're saying. Be open. Be ready to have constant conversation with your kids positive reinforcement, but also reinforcement, reinforcing what it is you're doing and the consequences of it. Because I even tell my students that, like, you know, you do know that if you go out here and at 16, be in a car with somebody and they hit somebody and kill them, you go to jail for murder for the rest of your life, no matter if you're 16 or not. Like, do you have, the do, is the consequences of what their actions, is that reinforced to them? So I'm No, to definitely. And it's, it's, and it's really, it's that conversation, you know, mm. you, and again, a lot of times they're going to bump their heads, but even just being aware. So <clears throat> this is Motivation Monday, but, and I'm, I'm going to get into motivation, but we wanted to lay, but, but also Boots, we want, we, you know, we keep it real here and we, and, and we, we say some things that are off the beaten path, but something to think about. And what I thought about Bootsy was, so first of all, my friend sent me, shout out to Paul Porter. He sent me the video and then he sent me a and this is crazy bootsy he sent me a hoodie uh he sent me a link for a bulletproof hoodie is that crazy a bulletproof hoodie it costs like six hundred dollars but can you imagine that bootsy a bulletproof i've never hoodie i've never heard of it so that like crazy? The process of you even telling me this and the fact that it's accessible is crazy. Like, well, I've never even heard And then also, on the news I saw, you said talking about access, and Marilyn Monroe was saying access is everything unlimited. Um, yeah, because they're sh showing on the news how you can take a device and, and then connect it to a gun and make the gun a semi automatic. An automatic. And semi -automatic. one of the, right, one of the devices, Bootsy, you can actually print. On these new printers, right? Yeah, three D three D printer. So, lastly, something to put just to think about. I, I said it earlier, but I'm gonna think it one more time. Think about what's really going on, Bootsy. So, because because also in that conversation, Paul was like, like he said, "Well, what are black people doing?" As far as this thing happens, this this out. So we uh, you know we we came from we we remember the time when 
radicalized tied to 9-11, and it was all about the Muslims, right? All about the Muslims and so-and-so getting radicalized. Absolutely. Absolutely. But what we're not talking about is white supremacy being radicalized Normalized. by Fox N News Normalized as every well. day, every day. And what we're not talking about, because these, you know, is that this 18-year-old is a symbol of the radicalization of white kids. Like like Cal Rittenhouse. Go ahead. Exactly. There's a Ooh. whole movement going on that people aren't talking about. And these young kids are getting their information off, you know, social media. There, there's so many sites that they can go to that we don't even know that they, you know, some of them we don't know. Um, mm -hmm. They're white supremacist sites and they're getting radicalized. Most of them are those kids that are, that are nerds, squares, don't get no love with their peers. They spend all their time uh, on, you know, playing video games and, and, and researching Hitler and all the prominent uh, white supremacists. But there's also a point to that, Mark, that I think people may be missing. That I think you and me, we should circle like this. Is that when you look at Cal Rittenhouse, he got no consequences and he literally became a hero. The oh, yeah. Dallas Cowboys, I want you to think about this. He get, he's an 18 year old with all these semi automatics, got to walk down the street with a machine gun, killed two people for not agreeing with the establishment, and became a celebrity. Like, are we thinking about the fact that this man is a celebrity getting celebrity treatment, showing up? The Dallas Cowboys invite him to the facility. He's standing in front of the trophies. He's doing all these major platforms. He's a hero. So not only, so I think we need to understand that people think in their mind now that I could be a hero for this. This is a badge of honor. Oh, this yeah. is, a, you know what I mean? Like, think about the fact that Kyle Reddell's got the crown TV with his crackers out tears. America felt bad for him. Let him out. And he's a celebrity. Oh, yeah. think, about, think about how George Zimmerman literally was about to participate in a celebrity boxing match. So let's just let's just normalize this. You kill a black kid over some, you know, over a hoodie, and then you get to travel the speaking circuit. You get to take the gun and put it on eBay and like uh, auction it off and make money and participate in celebrity events. You are your your only form of celebrity is you killing a black kid. So I just think in general, we need to understand what the dynamic is how they're looking at it, why it's so normalized, why they're so free, why they feel like, well, this is a great thing because it's no consequences for them. Oh, and yeah. not, only, not only is it not no consequences, you can almost become a celebrity in certain fractions of America. Oh, you are, so, no, he is good. This guy's going to be a celebrity. And, so, and, and, and uh, shout out to my man, Darnley Hodge. Darnley, mm -hmm. man, uh, Darnley, you hit me about a set designer. I have one, Darnley. I'll hit you today if you still need that. And the uh, boots of your audio, for some reason, I don't know why it does flare up, but it was better, but it got a little worse again, but I don't know why. But uh, Darnley, um, Darnley's movie, American Lowe's, Legacy of White Supremacy, Google it. It's on YouTube. Go check it out. Darnley, how you doing, my brother? Good Google, to see you. Google Darnley. And Darnley's talking about this, and, you know, Darn, and, and also, lastly, Bootsy, well, we... The, the thing that I the thing that that, that I'm I'm tripping on is my daughter is it Sydney? I don't think she's home, but she's. I, I, you know, hold on, that's so funny that you just called her name out like that. Like, okay, her, her psychiatry ahead. class. She told me what it was because so uh, not on YouTube, Amazon. That's what I'm talking about, darling. Sorry about that. On Amazon, um. Um, you can get actually purchase it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry, Donnelly. You know me. I, I, I was looking at the little clips. You know me, cheap. Um, the um, I was, you know, I was asking my daughter, who's in, you know, school. I said, "What is it? What is it called?" And I, I forgot the term, Darnley, You probably know it. One of y'all know the term. So, we black people see this eighteen-year-old murder black people. This is a, this is a straight up um, murder. Of black folks on his gun it said nigger on the gun it had 14 which is a white supremacist it's a whole thing it's a whole it's he's he's a he's a symbol he's a byproduct of of, of hate 
white supremacy right. and hate. He's a byproduct of. But, Bootsy, are black folks rioting in the streets? Are we burning down anything? Are we tearing down anything? Are we mad as hell at work? Are we triggered? No. And it's interesting because I believe, actually, is a bystander effect. Uh, my Sydney explained to me. I guess, it, it's it's a feeling. It's, it's it's like when you've given up. It's like when you when you when you believe that it doesn't matter. It does. It, well, well <laughs> and it does. I mean, I'm not gonna say it doesn't matter, but it. I forgot what the term was, but it, it's basically when you feel like your response or whatever you do is not going to change things. And so that obviously is where black folk, that is where we are because you still got to go to work the next day. You still got to take care of them kids. You still got to function. You know, does it, if I go outside and protest and leave my job, is that going to make a difference? If I, da, 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 is it going to make a difference? No. So it's just crazy because our, that tells you, if we don't think, if we don't think, if you don't think, if you're a black person in America and you don't think you're affected by America, That'll tell you everything you need to know. When this goes on, and you kind of go, hmm. It's normalized. It's normalized. Yeah. It's, it's, every it's day, like day, every day, every day somebody's getting killed. It happens, you know, right after this happened, there was a shooting in whatever, you know, whatever. It is a shooting. It was every- two last night. It was right. two last night. It was two right. yesterday. And then you throw on top of the shootings in our neighborhood. So it's almost like fatigue. Is it like uh yeah, right? Uh, I mean, you it's like yeah. It's, yeah. it's it's uh, it's it's called like victim, um, whatever. But it's deep, right? Because right. this we see this go on before our eyes, and there's a feeling of helplessness. And right. I don't even mean like helplessness, like oh lord, what is we gonna do? Not that kind of helplessness. The kind of I've got to go off my life. This is what America is. That's right. why the asinine statements made by. Uh, the vice president, okay? If somebody asks you, is America racist? Hell yes, it's racist. I don't give a damn if you're the vice president of the United States or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, look, man, it's ridiculous to say it's not. It's based on a, it's a hierarchy. It's a white supremacy uh, system that's in place. And, yeah, and- you know, we hope to change it. We hope to make it better. But to say, but to be in denial and say it's not, when you're sit, stay, you're, we're standing on land that was taken by somebody else, it's ridiculous. And then what's so crazy about it, though, to tell you how we are, and I've been guilty of it, too, not necessarily because I ain't really in front of the camera, but I'm going to be <laughs> and be guilty of it, is when, the, when, when somebody says, when the vice president says it's not, and everybody just goes, well, <laughs> well, you say well because you want to keep a job, you don't want to get caught up. You don't get embroiled. Status quo, you know what I'm status saying? Quo, status yeah. quo. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, because because <laughs> because what I think she did was she missed an opportunity. Yes. To ha- to have the uncomfortable conversation to get some stuff done from her office of vice president. Yes. It's, like the great thing what that we do is we're not we don't mind having the uncomfortable conversation and to get stuff done. Sometimes you do have to have an uncomfortable conversation because it has to be based on reality, and you can't really. Because then, when you don't, then you 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 know. And so, I never forget. I was working at. uh, It was funny because I had I had to reach out for a former employer for a a um you call it a reference. Okay. And as you know, Bootsy, we keeps it real. We keeps it real, right? Mm. Yeah. Well, and, and darling, and also it's no coincidence that that person would not have been elected. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> You're absolutely right. You have to be a certain type of person to play the game of politics in America. It just it's what it is. That's why it's called politics, though. Right. You ain't going to get you ain't going to be that woke and be a, a successful politician. You'll be successful in your community, but you're right. not going to be you're not going to be elected across a, 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 a swath, a, a large swath of America. If you're somebody who keeps it real, right? Because the system is what it is. So I had to reach out to a former employer for a reference. And I had to laugh because at this this former place I worked at, when, speaking of politics, when Obama <laughs> gave that speech, when Obama gave that speech on race, and let's keep it real, love him or hate him, and some are like, oh, Obama didn't do anything. Well, what he did do was 
he was a brilliant black man in a position that never had a black man in it before, right? And at the end of the day, that race speech he gave, a man who happened to be of, of African descent and you know, Caucasian, Asian, giving that speech on race, that had never been, I don't care what you say. You know, he, and he was a gifted orator, right? And so again, this former, this former employer that I had to get a reference from, we all watched it in a break room. And him and this other brother, who, who's a slick politician, when it was over, Bootsy, they both said, eh, seen that before. And I was like, you know me, Bootsy. And he was the general manager. <laughs> I was like, we've seen it before. <laughs> How can you say we've seen it before? We ain't seen a black president before. We never seen a black president who had a white mama and a black daddy before. What are y'all talking about? I was like, what are you talking? We've never seen that before. That speech right there will go down as one of the greatest speeches on race we've ever seen in, in this country, in any country. Are you talking about the man? Are you talking about the speech after Trayvon Martin was killed and he was normalizing about how that could have been the sound? Like I'm trying to understand which one because there were a few great speeches right. he did on race. He I did can't... one on Jeremiah Wright. He did one on uh, Trayvon. Then he did another one. Which I think one it was the first to? one. Okay, no problem. <laughs> but I'm just saying, come on now. Right. And then, but of course, you know. And so, but then years later, I had to go lean on my man for a reference. But again, that was I was cool with that because I'm okay with being. Who I am. If I can't get hired based on who I am, then I don't need a damn job. Right. right? But yeah, most of us, many of us, don't believe we are in that position. A lot of us are in the position, but we don't believe we are. So therefore, right. you have to play the game. And then some of us are in a position where you can't afford to do it. Yeah. You but know, but again. but but I think the great thing is what you're saying is, and I can say it this way, but sometimes you do got to pick your battles. You, you do definitely have to pick get. You you know you you kind of got to be precise on what it's worth debating and arguing and taking it. You know, yeah. like sometimes when somebody make a statement like what you heard, you kind of know. Okay, I know what this is with them. You know what I mean? So you know, I've done a great a great job of my life of yeah choosing what I'm going to really debate and argue and like have a conversation on because some things are just best to, left best to analyze and move and adjust accordingly. And you're right versus versus debating because. You know, sometimes you could talk to a dumb person till you're blue in the face. When the conversation is over, they're still going to be dumb. And Jay-Z said it best. He said, a wise man said, don't argue with fools because people from a distance can't tell who is who. And right. And at the end of the day, like, you're right. Looking back on it, I was that guy because it was just me. I, 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 like you said, that was looking back on it. Yeah. They were playing politics. I could have mm. just shut up. It didn't matter because it, 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 it didn't change anything. Mm -hmm. But I was a free thinker. And I was a free talker. <laughs> and hey, maybe that's why I am free in my basement right now. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, your free thinking and you learning and acquiring more skills have now opened up other doors that did not happen before. Babe, and I got this one thing because this is hilarious to me. And y'all know me. Darn, darn it, everybody y'all know me now. So imagine... What I, what, what, like you say, the lesson I had to say. So I asked for a reference. He gave a great reference, right? He said, hey, man, I gave you a great reference. Just remember, you just have to humble yourself. <laughs> I was like this. Thank you. You know? <laughs> yeah. wow. So he gave you a great reference, and he ended it like that. <laughs> wow! I, Humble yourself. You still laughing? You still laughing about it, which is great. Like, I yeah, I definitely would. Because Lord knows, if you have belief in 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 yourself and your your skills and all that, yeah, 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 you good. But just humble yourself a little bit. Uh, I would ask a question, but I'm not even gonna do it. No, nope. I'm gonna go ahead and fall back. I'm not even gonna ask a question, bro. So, Mr. Vegas, we had a uh, we had a nice a nice week this week, man. I'll, I, I'll take you through I'll take you through my journey. So, Bootsy Vegas, yeah, I saw, uh, I, I saw some of your journey this week, but I'm gonna go ahead. to Baltimore. That's what's and, up? Uh, sat on that looking on real that, boss like right here. You looking real boss like right here? You know what though? This was a good. This I had a. Let me tell you something, Bootsy. God is always around, ain't he? If you're listening. Mm -hmm. I think we're in the space, Bootsy, because we're listening. 
Absolutely. So I would I was going to a, a my man had a happy hour at his house, his beautiful house. Cigar and you know, cigar and you know, it was a drink and a cigar, whatever the, you know, the image that was. That water, hold on, hold on. That water was in his backyard. Did you no, no, no. This this was with the, this one. I went down to the Baltimore Harbor. Oh, I was about to say because I, I need harbor. to meet him. I need if that was his backyard. I need to meet him too. Well, he had a beautiful home and he has a pool. So I had, but I had this extra cigar. I had, his, I had what did I have? Boots. I had a cigar in my drawer that I needed to. You know, I'm not really doing that anymore, but I wanted to get it out of the way. And actually, I had half of a joint that was left over from uh, the hip hop museum guys. You know, you know the hip hop museum guys. They now yeah. have a dispensary, and so showing support, I bought some. You know, and so I, I brought, I packed those both up. And I said I need to get rid of these. I threw the, I threw the joint away because I didn't have the cigar. And I was there so early, I went down to the harbor and just sat down. Bam! Right. And now that the image is going against my new image of health and fitness, though. You know, I yeah. realize that, right? Yeah. Reinventing my clock. Go and ahead. people don't see me this way. They don't see they don't see me as this boss that was a cigar in his mouth thing. You know, That's not really like me. Thinking you the thinking you the Baltimore Sugar Knight, but go ahead. I'm with you, right. baby. But, you know. but the beauty of it, shout out, <laughs> uh, shout out to, 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 to my man, Howard um, and Kevin. Um, I had a great conversation with him and he pointed out to me because he was sitting on, he was, he was a, on the other side. He recognized me and he's sitting in his boat. He has a sail, he has a, a, bo- a sailboat with a motor on it. So he can sail, he can motor. He's on, he's on the harbor. He said that he basically is at the end of the day the beautiful baltimore harbor which we're very familiar with you know in a predominantly black city what percentage do you think of black owned businesses are down there on the on the water on the harbor and that that basically is supposed, supposed, supposed to be a percentage of black businesses minority businesses in any of the in baltimore in baltimore, and in baltimore many, yes in baltimore oh huh <laughs> right. And so he's fighting that. Right. He's fighting that because ironically, we call it the Baltimore Harbor. We call it the Baltimore Harbor. But ironically, again, I'm on this side. He's on the other side. Um, He says, uh, you know, you know what it's called. And he, he, his boat was right here and he points to the sign. And, you know, what's so funny. Historically, you know what it's actually called? No. Harris Lake. And guess what his last name is? Harris? Harris. Is that crazy? That is crazy. Wow. That's the kind of fight he's in. That was called Harris Lake, son. <laughs> anyway, that was so I did that was that was that was early in the week. And okay. then, as you know, Mr. Vegas, um, Allison and I, Allison and I had a gig. I forgot which day it was, but we were the MCs for the health council, the 75th annual health council uh, uh, event. And let me tell you something. Look at me looking like somebody's daddy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cause uh, you definitely look at her like you, you better get these words, right. If I had to caption it, look like my beautiful wife, don't mess this up. Look at my aunt. Look you know at my aunt. Saying? You know, auntie, the, the, auntie uh, Ann Allison, former CEO and president of NIH was honored. We sat at the table with the CEO of, of George Washington Hospital, a uh, Howard Hospital CEOs in the building, Nova Healthcare in the building. Just a who's who of everybody in healthcare and medical care was there. We had a great time. And I, you know, I was stumbling and bumbling, but thank God I'm married to a wonderful person who can handle it could handle it. But it was a great <laughs> it was a somebody, great hey, 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 thank God somebody can read a teleprompter. Without looking at it twice in the family, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly, because I was I was messing up names and stumbling through, but it was still a joy. <laughs> well, you better fix it soon, my brother. You better, you know what I mean? You better fix it soon. Ex- expeditiously. I, I, th- I think you're right. Uh, there's one, I think. Rondi, correct. Shout out to Rondi. I've been rocking with Rondi all weekend long. Amazing. Okay. And so um, then, <clears throat> Bootsy Vegas, I had breakfast. With my oldest, I uh, love Sydney. it. Sydney, uh, we had breakfast. I'm doing so. I'm doing breakfast. With, so the girls are all home. So Sydney was first. Then I'll do uh, Skyler. Who, so Sydney's at Hampton. She's going to be a senior. Skyler's at Norfolk State. 
still working out, whatever, it's freshman or sophomore. And then, of course, Baby will be a, heading into her senior year in high school. So that driving is that there. breakfast. And she's driving now. Let's let that be known. That's right. Baby is driving now. Baby yeah. is driving now. Get and her so a car. That happens. You better hurry then, up. Get her some wheels. Chop, chop now. Chop, chop. That girl need that girl gonna need a vehicle. Come she on, got now, it already. She got her right? Skyler have a car. Skyler's okay. not driving, so she already got a car. And then, of course, this weekend, a sold out weekend at Bethesda Man. Blues and Jazz or Women's Love. And a stage of sky. Hey, baby. Man, shout out. I saw I met Lois. Anastasia killed it. Marquise killed it. This show was top quality. Shout out to DC, Black Broadway, top quality. Dana and her husband, they did it, man. They did Dr. it. Dr. Bell Long, they, too. Let's gonna, get my man Dr. Bell Long some love. Oh, yeah, Dr. Long. We're going to talk to Dana tomorrow through a review, okay. but it was sold out. And the reaction, the audience, you know, you know, black folks, y'all standing up, talking. Screaming, yeah. <laughs> talking to the stage. Now you know it's one thing to talk to the movie Bootsy, but you can't be talking to the stage. While they in the middle of the of the performance, yeah. You you know our people. You know our people. <laughs> I, our people go give a reaction no matter where it's at. You know what I mean? And we ain't so gonna hold it out, in. You know, of course, backstage. Uh, I, oh, wait a minute! I saw you. I saw your friend Bootsy. Wait a minute! Sassy was in the building, Bootsy. I'm being jealous. I'm up there posing with Sassy. Sassy's beautiful, man. I see what's going on there, Bootsy Vegas. Well, let me say this. Sassy is one of the most beautiful, beautifulest people inside and out. I don't she know if beautifulest is a word, Bootsy Vegas, but yes. yeah. Yeah, I tell you what, if you see her in person, She's everybody you under beautifulest woman in the world. Just like that. No, she really yeah. is beautiful. She really yeah. is. And she's just funny. She's oh my funny, God. she's talented, and she was great. Hold on. For everybody who, who don't believe me in this. She does these impressions and voiceovers. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. Like she Okay, we're going to have Sassy on it. Yeah. So Sassy not only is one of the most dynamic singers that I've ever been around, just in, just in general. What? She got, oh, yeah. She, look, no. Like, she's a singer singer. Had a record deal, everything. I, you know, I've known her forever. Um, but she can do these impressions. So she has this English and Jamaican accent that she can talk the whole day in. And well, now, we need to get on the show. What are we yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, she has a very high-ranking job at Howard University uh, Department of Admissions. So, what? Uh, yeah, she's like uh, assistant director. She's a very high-ranking. And, and I have to say this. Me and her are homies, homies. We have been homies forever. We always have these amazing conversations. From time to time, we'll just hang out and have uh, dinner or lunch and catch up. You know what I mean? You know, we, we me and Sassy are really cool with my homie. Bootsy, I gotta say, I say one thing, but Bootsy Vegas knows everybody, and why are all the women that Bootsy knows, they're all beautiful, and they all got great jobs. Very interesting, Bootsy Vegas. I'm watching you, brother. Yeah, pay and attention. Also, I, I need to shout out to Cornita. Cornita, make sure everything was taken care of. Shout out to the, the beautiful Cornita. You can see she was there. Uh, mm. Great, great production. This play, man, it needs to go on the road. Look at God. We'll talk We'll talk to Dana tomorrow. We'll, I'm gonna yeah. I'll save that for but tomorrow. But but um, also congratulations to what Dr. Lavelle Long is doing with DC Black Broadway. Come on now. Like I you know, I think people are not realizing that he is creating and, and formulating and sustaining an industry in DC that has always been needed. He is now in, in, in the forefront of it. And this is not his first successful production. This is almost maybe his fifth or sixth. And it's gonna show you that you never know what life can take you. You Come never on know. Now. You never know. Uh, the main thing is it's never too late to really live your dreams and put Come action on. to it. And congratulations to him because from where he came and what he's been through to what he's doing now is an amazing testament of him not giving up on his gift, him not giving up on his determination, but also not giving up on other people in his community. He is creating an industry for other people for them as long as it's up as well. So well, shout out to my man, Dr. Lavelle Long. You deserve this. Congratulations, sir. Well, I didn't want to say nothing, Bootsy. I, I'm a little, I'm out, I don't want to be premature, but I'll just say this. You know me in the DMV. You know me, Allison Seymour's husband in the DMV and in DC, right? But Bootsy, are you ready for Baltimore Black Broadway? Quit playing. Let's go. To be continued. Also, Bootsy. This weekend, and you, and you know this, Bootsy, you, 
because you know everything there is to know about DC. So Bootsy Vegas also this Saturday, we got a lot in. Bam, Allison and I were at the Lamont Riggs Boys and Girls Club Fun Family Fun Day. Come How was now. it? How it was, was it? Talk to me about it. First of all, it's amazing. Shout out to Dr. Greg Rebell. You know, that's my man. Uh, of right. course, my co-host of Play Space Podcast. New episodes coming soon. Dr. Mm -hmm. Bell's family there, his mother and father, both in their wow. 80s. They're growing up in that neighborhood, Boots. You know the rich, rich heritage of that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And the keynote speaker, the mayor came through. Who knew the mayor? The mayor got ties to that community. Who knew? Yeah, I she know grew up did, there. Uh, no, she grew up there, but also the director, Dr. Sherlita Settles, and <laughs> yeah. the mayor. First of all, shout out to Sherlita Settles. Yes. You know what I mean? Who is the is the creative, the cultural arts director for DC Department of Recreation? I keep telling her, you might want to bring me on over there. You know what I mean? But hey, that's all another subject. But that that is my home. It's crazy because I mentored her son when he when he was growing up. He's an amazing person. Shout out to Shirley the Settles, who's an amazing singer as well. Well, and you know, also Bootsy. So our keynote, who also grew up there, uh, Richard Dyer, Allison's boss, uh, general manager at uh, WSA Nine. His roots are there. Right. Uh, he talked about the heartbreak of when they tore down. He drives through. He doesn't live there, but he drives through there every day. And Allison's like, "Well, you know, he doesn't have to come this route." But look at that. He's just like Bootsy Vegas. He love he love his city. He comes through just to see what's going on, what's popping. And he mm -hmm. said <laughs> when he tore down that Kentucky Fried Chicken, it broke his heart. But it only be replaced by Chick Fil A. So as he said, it's the same damn chicken. But anyway, uh, he was hilarious. He was it was great. You know, you know how Bootsy is nothing better than when you had success and you can shout out your boys that you grew up in the audience, right. cats that you know you know their nickname and you know their real name, but you never call them their real name. Man. And it's doing that also. Um, the funniest part was, so I work with, so, you know, Richard Dyer, Richard is a su super successful guy. You know, he played at Boston College. Now, he walked, what did, uh, did Jay-Z say in his song, Bootsy? He walked like a ball player. Look, um, you know, his brother was a superstar athlete. He's a superstar athlete, Bootsy. I didn't know, though, he was, I knew he was an athlete. I didn't know he was in the damn Boston College Hall of Fame. Okay, come on, <laughs> come on, uh, Richard Dyer. You know what I'm saying? That's the kind of move, and he's from that community, man. Absolutely. And it's just, and I, because I told him, he, he had the nerve to mention me because, you know, Bootsy and I, we're, we're, God put us together because we are observers. I think, I Master. think, because I think we are just, I think we naturally love people. We love people. We're inspired by their stories. Right. I think that's just how, that's just how we're built, right? That's how that's we wired. Richard, quoted me because I was telling him, yo, man, what is the deal? Because <laughs> because of Dr. Bell, I'm tied into the community. So Dr. Bell's there. Uh, Dr. Bell's brother, Mike, who's a multimillionaire who came from the community, who has who creates has a tutoring system. Acoletics, who's one of our sponsors. Also, mm -hmm. Brad Tatum, who worked with Allison years at Fox, who's in his 70s, still running court. You know, <laughs> I said, what is going on, man, with y'all brothers in this community? You're older, you're, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, mm. but you you look young and you're so active. So he brought that up in the speech. And I, again, he was shouting out dudes, Bootsy, who were 10 years older than me that I know could probably dunk on me. And I'm just trying, but I guess it's that community love. It's that kind of like, Absolutely. you know, he was saying, steel sharp and steel. He said we were super competitive. Uh, academically and also athletically. That's a fact. Um, also, you came from these families. You know, you had that good nutrition at home. And it always, Bootsy, you know, we talked about this off the air before. These kind of black communities are not, not just all over D.C., but all over all the major cities, right? And so you say, well, what happened? Crack. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. What happened was a systematic destruction of these communities. Because these kids, these people, like I said, Richard Dyer, president, News Channel, Dr. Greg Rebell, legally blind, Dr. Greg Rebell, he got his damn, he got his damn degree with a damn magnifying glass, Bootsy. You know what? Come on now. Yeah. You can't yeah. stop these people. Yeah, some when people you, just got it in them. When you arm, arm people with this kind of support and Man. education, and community, 
They cannot be stopped. So you got to stop them. You, now, the other thing is, so interesting, we're talking about this. Saturday, Dean Wood Radio Broadcast did a two and a half hour Zoom with Larry Miller, the CEO of the Michael Jordan brand. Come on. Uh, it was an amazing conversation. For those of you guys who do not know, he is the former president of the Portland Trail Blazers. He's now the CEO of the brand. He has a book called Jump. He committed a murder at 16 in self-defense in Philadelphia, got out of jail, ended up going back to jail for committing robberies. End up getting two degrees in uh in jail, and his book is called Jump, uh, where he exposed his story, how he got there. He spent two and a half hours speaking to my students about his journey, how he got there, sense of community. He even offered two of my students internships their uh, sophomore years in college, and he will be coming to meet us this summer at our facility. And word on the curve is some Jordan paraphernalia may appear oh. when he comes. Yeah, so, you know, but we ended up having a great discussion. He was really impressed with the kids, the fact that all 12 of my students wrote the book, and his story was the same one of, of, of what you're reading is a sense of community, sense of redemption, never being too late. Um, He was explaining how um, he was the only black uh, NBA president, and he also explained that that he has been out of jail since the 80s, and there are people who are still in jail when he was there, that are still there. And he is so lucky that God has chosen him to take this journey because there are people who were there with him. Some of them committed some of the same crimes and they never got released. And he left out to end up being the first black president of the Portland Trailblazers, CEO Michael Jordan brand. His book is called Jump. Please read it. It was an amazing conversation. So it's, it's so interesting that we're going to have these same successful black stories of you know, being able to break tradition, break curses, but also giving back and keeping the sense of community in, in um, intact as well. And speaking of sense of community, the book man, David, write the damn book, Miller, who's got a new book out. David, we need to get you on this week, man. Is, is that his middle name? Write the damn book for real. You made it, it up. It should be because that's what David, David's going to tell you to write your damn book and get it out there. And he's got a new, matter of fact, David, I would love to have you on tomorrow, but I'll hit you. Uh, David Miller. Legacy of black communities. And it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. And there's a reason why, man. There's a reason why these things get, you know. And so again, um, you know, Mr. Vegas, we're not gonna go long today. I have a couple things. That's why I'm in my, my but uh any oh. any any closing any closing words on this motivating Monday. Oh, you know what? I wanted to play a little motivation. Maybe I we'll, we'll play it going out. We'll say we'll do a little motivation going out, but first let's hear from you. Uh what, no, what's, uh, what, what do you have for us as we wrap things up? Uh, congratulations. I just want to thank DC Officer Cable. Uh, we did six 30 minute uh, TV podcast specials this week. Thank you, Larry Miller. Thank you, Paxton Baker from the Washington Nationals. Um, the first six I'm, years of my ex and I'm really, I'm really excited about that as Mark just turns me off in the middle of it. But hey, uh, congratulations to everything that, that you did. Such an amazing thing. You know, I, I am really excited about you expanding what you're doing, expanding your reach. And I'm also grateful that you're allowing this young community dreamer, go-go activist to get the ride on this journey with the Mark Clark Morning Show because I'm getting used to these 10 a.m. morning, uh, you know, 10 a.m. call times, my schedule there, you know what I mean? So, man, but thank you. But congratulations on just venturing out, you know what I mean? Because, um, you know, I've always said that me and you, I said this years ago, me and you probably should be together doing some stuff in this area to connect some dots from Baltimore to D.C., it is happening. So, you know, congratulations, on everything you're doing. You really deserve it. You know, we don't, we don't know how long this is going to happen, but you know, uh, no, no matter what, uh, we have done some amazing work and it is really great, but thank oh, you. Man, boy, they'll, they'll say it like that, Mr. Vegas. So look, oh, boy, well, you know. um, <laughs> uh, so also speaking of DC black Broadway, Bootsy Vegas, boy, cause see, I, already know, sa hi, sassy. <laughs> I already know your mind boots. When I say this, you're going to be like, yo, matter of fact, I know you're gonna be want to be on up on the music, but you know. So DC Black Broadway in August. Mm -hmm. Dr. Lavelle. Now, DC Black Broadway, they sold out MGM National Harbor with a go-go version of the Wiz called The Giz. Right? Which was incredible. Right? Sold out to National Harbor. Now with a residency at Bethesda Blues and Jazz, we announced last night. On stage, Bootsy. Let me get myself together for this one. You ready? Mm -hmm. Grease with a side of mambo sauce. 
I already know Boosie Vegas is mine. I love, hey man, I love that <laughs> idea, man. So then you better wake up. Come on now. I've got chills. It's a drum pickup for me that you just did, though. It's, 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 you know, it's a drum pickup for me, dude. There's so many because we know Greece, like so everybody knows the songs to Greece. Yeah. So you, in your mind, it's probably you're probably just like, okay, what songs are they gonna do? Because it's like, dude, it's gonna be so that's gonna be crazy. But there's the blues and jazz, which was cool because it was the first time I really saw a play there. And the sound was good. It, it works. You know what I'm saying? It works. Mm -hmm. And the music, the, the, the acoustics are great. So that music <laughs> and, and the storyline, you, you, you're, you're like, who the characters like you, you want to see, cause you know, again, you already have an idea. That's the right. thing that the veil does that's so smart when you do like, you know, the golden girls and you do, because right. we already know the characters in and out, but then you do, a, you do a version with, an urban musical production of it. it right. There's so many ways what, you could go with it. What is Sandy going to look like? What is Sandy going to look like? What is, the, I don't even know the John, the, the John Devoto well, character. Yeah. Whatever his name is. What is he going to look like? Is he going to have locks? Is he going to have, what's he going to, is he thin? Is he big? I don't That's know. Great, man. man. You know what's so funny? Obviously, G would be perfect. <laughs> like, right? That, obviously, that would be, in my mind, if you're doing a go-go version of Grease, G, Big G to me is like, duh. But, you know, yeah. I know that's a, that might be a little, you know, who knows. <laughs> who else, Boots? Anybody in, in the DC? This We're just playing a game. Anybody in mind just comes to mind when you think of that? that uh, me. <laughs> Bootsy Vegas. You, I mean, you'd be, it would be great. <laughs> no, anyway, Are you open yeah. to that? Uh, I'm open to that. First of all, I'm open to everything. You okay. know what I mean? Like, like, you know what I mean? Now, it, it, all, it definitely all depends on what part of the summer it is because Boosie Vegas has a plan in place that he is going to do at least two to three weeks with Earth, Wind & Fire, Carlos Santana this summer. Boosie Vegas is, let me just say that right now. I'm doing that. Like, it's, it's just about, I just got to see when my broadcast, you know some summer program ends and, 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 and where them dates coincide. So, but Boosie Vegas going on the road this year. Yeah. Come on, Bootsy Vegas. Bootsy Vegas is getting a bag this year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Bootsy you know Vegas I mean? is getting the bag. And, and, and who knows? Some radio opportunities up in Upper Northwest may open up as well. You know oh, what I mean? Uh, wait a minute. You know, but who knows? You know what I mean? You, you know, don't know now you know. Uh, well, we don't know, but you know, who knows? You know what I mean? Some people <laughs> may see fit to open up some stuff up your up uh, Wisconsin Avenue for you. <laughs> for your boy. All right. It's a motivating Monday. We'll get wrap up. One of my favorite, Jim Rome. I like Jim Rome. His voice cracks me up. He's always like, ah. He's interesting. He, yeah. He's interesting. Yeah, I call Rome. I call him the Howard Stern of sports uh, uh, talk uh, television. But yeah. oh, not that Jim Rome. Not that. Oh. Not that one. This okay. is the motivator, Jim Rome. See, this is the different one. Okay. Yeah, he's not. The, he's not controversial. He's more to that. So we'll wrap up with him, and we'll see you tomorrow again. Dana's going to join us to talk about her play what she's learned after having two sold out performances for a play she wrote like 12 years ago. Crazy, right? Look at guy. Come on now. Dana Sometimes Dana. it's on his time. Right. Some, right. Sometimes you, why, Absolutely. why is it that? Da, da, da? Yeah. Well, because he wanted it to be right. Hey, and, and the greatest phrase I've ever heard is a delay is not a denial. Come on now. And with that, we'll see y'all tomorrow. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. Second six years, I wound up rich. Someone says, don't you have to do the second six years like you did the first six years and jot this down. No, no, you don't have to live the second six years like the first six. You can use all the information and all the advice and repairing all of your mistakes and adopting a new and refined philosophy so that the next six years can be totally different than the last six. No other life form can do this. See, if you were a tree, you'd be stuck. As a tree, if you used up all the nourishment that was around you and you couldn't change location, see, you would die. But that's not true. Human beings can change location, go north, south, east, west, live here for a while, live somewhere else for a while. So that's a note to make. You can greatly alter the course of your life. Now, here's the next note to make. Five years from now, you will arrive. The question is where? If you keep up your present disciplines and keep up the present pace that you're on, where will you be in five years? Boy, it's easy to say, hey, I haven't really thought about that.
So now make this note. In five years, here's the probability. You will either arrive at a well-designed destination or an undesigned destination. And I promise you, five years from now, you, you really don't want to arrive at an undesigned destination. Because you may very well wind up wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, living where you don't want to live, maybe doing what you don't want to do, simply because you didn't design a better destination.